It's Christmas Eve. Airlines have cancelled more than 2,000 U.S. flights due to increasing COVID cases among their crews. Let's bring in Sheila Kyogalu from Jefferies. Uh, Sheila, uh, first, first of all, thank you for joining us. Uh, second uh, to my first question, um, how, how much damage does this do to bottom line earnings expectations if we have, say, two weeks in total of, of quite severe flight cancellations? Um, thanks for having me, Wilford. It, it's hard to tell. Right now, what we're seeing with PSA throughput is that it's 17 percent below 2019 levels. A month ago, Thanksgiving weekend, it was about 10 percent below. So you could maybe say 5 percent of the hit is due to Omicron and the remaining 5 percent or so is due to cancellations. We're seeing cancellations for some airlines as high as 10 percent as reported. Um, some are around the 5 percent mark. They should be sub 1 percent. So I don't think this is going to go away just because we're turning the page to 2022. This could stick around for the next few weeks. And on the bottom line, um, these airlines are not only confronting demand risk, but um, they have inflation headwinds with their workforce as well as labor is quite tight. And you're still paying folks if they're quarantining for 10 days. So in, in the very short term, uh, obviously, we're talking about cancellations. In, in the, the medium term, what about bookings? Have they been hit by Omicron? It's hard to tell. Um, we're in a season where everybody wants to hit the road and travel. We're seeing some seasonality. But um, we're seeing bookings that we track um, down about 9% month over month. So a bit of a sequential decline. Um, so right now, to give you guys a picture, leisure is 10% off 2019 levels in the U.S., U.S. domestic. Um, what we're waiting for, as everybody knows, is that corporate recovery that's very, very staggered. And, um, you know, the European, transatlantic, uh, transpacific recovery. I don't know. Haven't the TSA numbers been really strong, Sheila? Last week, it was like 2 million people passed through TSA every single day. So, some of those numbers almost as strong as normal, aren't they? They are. Um, they're only off 10 percent below 2019 levels. But you are seeing, when we normalize for seasonality, you are seeing some fall off. Um, we saw this with Delta as well. It was down about 5% due to the impact of the Delta variant. So we're seeing that. I mean, it's hard to see these numbers given you're so late into the year. You're at the highest TSA numbers you, sh you should be seeing. So um, we'll have to wait till January and February to see what really happens. But I think you'll see more of the same. You'll see U.S. domestic 10% below 2019. I don't think that'll change, but you won't see that recovery. And what we are really hoping for from Q3 to Q4 was well, international was down 45 percent in Q4, Q3. We were hoping that they would get to down 30 percent below 2019 levels in Q4. And that might not happen. And you might stay at that down 40 percent mark for the next two quarters. Sheila, I note that you have American United and Southwest as holds, but Delta as a buy. Why is Delta the standout buy? A um, few reasons. We like it. As one, a premium carrier, uh, we think people will gravitate towards the premium carriers and the premium carrier is able to get price. What we're seeing in the U.S. market right now, a narrow body market, is you're seeing a flood of aircraft come in because of the low cost carriers like Frontier. And they're increasing capacity about 20 percent above 2019 levels. So it's going to be hard for the other carriers to get price. So we like Delta for its pricing premium potentially. And two, we're hoping for that transatlantic recovery. They're the most exposed there. And three, uh, the corporate recovery. Uh, corporate's about 50% below 2019 levels, but Delta has a higher exposure to small, medium businesses.